Nowadays, brands rely too much on advertising to increase awareness and engage their customers. This method has been working, but sales are slow and very hard to measure. Imagine a world where customers actively promote your product and services to their friends, colleagues, mothers, father, grandma, and grandpa. We call that advocate marketing. And with Tada, we can help you convert your regular customers to active advocates. Here's Alex. He purchased product and service from his favorite store, My Brand. He can buy in the store or online. After his purchase, he got a digital membership card from My Brand. Now, every time Alex shops in My Brand, Alex receives My Brand points or cash back. Then, Alex meets his friends Anna. Alex was so excited to tell Anna how happy he is with My Brand. Alex refers Anna to shop in My Brand by giving Anna My Brand digital member card. All Alex needs is Anna's phone number. So easy and simple. Now, every time Anna shops in My Brand, Anna receives cash back or points. And because Alex referred Anna to shop in My Brand, every time Anna shops in My Brand, Alex also receives cash back. The rewards make Alex more loyal to My Brand and encourage him to promote My Brand even more to his friends in person and via social media. Alex has been converted from customer to advocate. And guess what's the best part? Now, Anna joins Alex to become My Brand Advocate too. This is the old My Brand. Let's see the difference after My Brand implements Tata. Now, My Brand have much larger customer network by converting their happy customers into their advocates. This is the new age of customer acquisition method and is highly effective and measurable. After all, increasing sales doesn't have to be so hard. Loyal customers and engaged advocates are the secret weapon. Talk to us now. We help brands moving from transaction to relationship, from customers to advocates. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for waiting. Good.
morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our Connect webinar uh, sessions. And today we are proudly uh, present that we are in collaborations with Tada. Thanks for this uh, new ways of uh, webinars because we usually have a Zoom webinar mode. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm Mahesa. By the way, if you don't notice about me, I'm the community and event manager from Connex by Marquee. Today, we're going to have another lifestyle related event. It's going to be a culinary event. So I'm glad that uh, we have uh, we can invite four reputable speakers from me now. And I want to greet them one by one, one by one. So first of all, we had uh, Jet Doble. Hi, Mr. Jet. How Hi, are you? Mesa. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. How are you? Yeah, doing? yeah, yeah. Hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good? good. Yeah, good, good, very good. Good. <laughs> so you seem a bit shocked. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Your face is amazing, Lori. <laughs> okay. Where are you there? Uh, I'm at the office. Oh, in the office in Jakarta. Yeah. Yes, Jakarta. Okay, cool. cool. Thanks, Thank Jack. You. And I will get another speaker. Uh, she is a uh, she is Astrid. Hi, Astrid. Hi. Hello. Wow, you seem so stunning. <laughs> <laughs> Are you out? Uh, no, 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 like, no, I'm still at home. Uh, I have a few meeting day today, so it's, I'm starting it with everyone here at Connects. And then after that, I'm off to the restaurant. Oh, okay. So yours seems very on on point, like from head to toe. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> so is it is it like like your day to day or your daily basis? Like your something like this? I have to because um I'm representing a lifestyle brand, MDA Restaurant. Mm, yeah. We have a few lifestyle restaurants and we are going through a lot of changes right now and we are going through a lot of uh, renovations, revamping, growing because we are making sure that during this pandemic we are taking the opportunity to grow. So basically oh, we see cool. what's wrong, we want to fix it and then we want to move forward. So my day will consist of handling the restaurants, renovation, meeting with the interior and... and oh and yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have to be on point all the time, yeah. <laughs> from morning until late night. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Astrid. And then we have um, Kartik. Hi, Kartik. Are you there? Hello. Hi. Hi, Mahesa. Hello. How are you, Kartik? Not too bad. How are you? Not so bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Always happy all all day long, every day. <laughs> That's my job. So where are you now? In Jakarta also, yeah? Yes, in Jakarta. Samangi. Oh, okay. So you are at your place now or office? Or? Oh, no, no, okay. I'm at my home, yeah. Okay, so, oh yeah, by the way, where are you from? India, yeah? Yes, I'm from India, but I've been in Jakarta now for four years. Oh, okay. So you are get used to it, yeah. I mean, what's the difference between India and Jakarta? I mean, in terms of the uh, situations of the city? Like the weather or the traffic? Uh, I, would, okay. <laughs> I think weather and traffic are more or less the same. Uh, and even in the current situation with the pandemic going on, um, the F&B industry in both countries, I think, are in pretty much the same situation. You know, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know. Unfortunately, uh, the F&B industry has not received a lot of support from uh, mm -hmm. the different governments. You know, because there are different challenges also, yeah. right? Um, so, so I think the struggle and the similarities, uh, you know, between what other uh, brands and companies are also trying to do in order to help the F&B industry is also very similar in both countries. Okay, cool. Thanks, Kartik. <laughs> okay, thank you. And the last but not least is our beloved partners, uh, Miss Selfie. Hi, Miss Selfie. Hello, uh, I can't hear your voice. Still uh, mute. Can you unmute? Yeah. 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 How Hello. are you? Hello, I'm good. Always, all day long, every day. <laughs> so, uh, where are you now? Uh, I'm still at home, working from oh, home. 
oh work from home so oh yeah by the way thank you for collaborating with us yeah by having yeah this it's also our work. pleasure for sure <laughs> Yeah, because uh, we are the uh, Velo friends, yeah. I mean, I met your representative last time, like lots of Tadas reps <laughs> on the other <laughs> occasions, like exhibitions and then, yeah, and then the uh, yeah. meeting sessions, yeah. Velo apps, and, yeah, yeah, one of our yeah, clients. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how's, how's Tadas so far, like, any difference, any... Changes. Well, of course, uh, with with the verticals that we are having now, uh, yeah. F&B, fashion, and other services like barbershop, uh, beauty clinics, and such, uh, of course, uh, those are uh, three industries, among others, that are uh, hit the most yeah, during this pandemic. Uh, so, But what we're trying to say to our brands are um, we, we need to survive together uh in this in this uh hardships but um we need to move on uh yeah. because uh we don't want only on a defensive strategy we also need to have an offensive strategy even during this hard time okay okay thank you selfie and then maybe we shall start yeah uh by the way today i'm gonna announce that today is very special not only because we are using youtube channels uh, in collaboration with Tada, of course, but also we had a two different sessions. Uh, first session will be talk show between our first two speakers uh, from from MDA and from uh, Foodie Magazine, and then the second session will be a webinar mode, like uh, while you are uh, doing the webinar, watching the webinar. So there's a slide, and then there's a Q and I. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, call the first speakers. Uh, okay, so his the uh, his brand Foodies is a premium English language food and beverage magazines that publish in print and digital channels. He starts in 2009 as food and drink editors for Time Out Jakarta, and then he also founder of Jakarta Best Eats and and yeah and drinks best it's which named the top 40 restaurant in jakarta and bali and please welcome jet doubles from foodies magazine hello jet hi Mesa. thank you okay and i'm gonna call another speaker yeah uh she's serving culinary excellence in the heart of jakarta through multiple lifestyles dining brand which is animale h and butcher and also carbon please welcome Chief Marketing Officer of MDA Restaurant Group, Ms. Astrid Surya Tenggara. Hi, Astrid. Hi. Hi, Astrid. Okay. Yes. okay, please. You can start, guys, now. Thank you. No, I wanted to start by saying that uh, I think throughout the pandemic, uh, the F&B industry and the hospitality industry has been, you know, uh, the two industries which have been hardest hit uh, and the uh, uh, you know, it was, it's, it's been a challenge to, to keep afloat for a lot of restaurants. And right. uh, uh, it's been, it's been uh, you know, us in the media as a, as a magazine, what we do is we observe. Uh, and uh, we've been, uh, it's, it, it felt, you know, really sad to observe and, you know, uh, realize that a lot of our friends in the industry have been uh, suffering, you know. Uh, with the closure of a lot of all of the restaurants, uh, it's it's been a challenge for many, and uh, we've uh, you know tried to keep in touch with a lot of our restaurant and F and B friends, uh, trying to figure out um, uh, you know how they're going, and uh, you know trying to be supportive. Uh, we've been uh, we know that a lot of uh, restaurants have let go of people have uh, have suffered because of the closure and uh, you know it's also uh, a difficult time um, it's added to to uh, you know it's affected everyone and i think the it's 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 nice to to see that throughout the months of uh, the lockdown a lot of our fnb friends have you know quickly evolved to to with the times you know like uh, for example restaurants um, who never used to do delivery 
are now surviving uh, and doing a lot of business of delivery. And uh, I, I've been a keen observer of the restaurants of Astrid, and we were happy that Animale has, uh, you know, evolved very quickly. One of the first restaurants to evolve. Uh, how are you guys doing now, Astrid? Um, first of all, it's very nice to reunite after all these months of quarantine that we haven't really seen each other. Hopefully, we can yeah. see each other in person very soon. And good morning to everyone. Thank you for that and connect us on morning for having us. So basically, um, I'm from MBA, which has actually a few different brands. Uh, for now, we have Animale. We are renovating and revamping one of our lovely steakhouse from AB. We want to redefine it even more, um, how do I say, elevated brand that can be a top of mind for every of, of our customer will be called H and Butcher. So we are redefining the A and the B into H and Butcher. And then we are carbon. And we are also opening two more, two more restaurants in the next six months. So it's a long ride, but it's like the ability for us to evolve and adapt is what makes us able to survive. Uh, we we need to know when to sort of like take a break or thing and then evolve. So we will take an aside from the other project ongoing. From a lifestyle dining experience, we change it into once before the past baby, yeah, before the before everything has to be closed, we already do takeaway and delivery. And then during that time. Uh, we are struggling to change within in the span of two weeks from plating to packaging. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a lifestyle. You know, we serve ambience, music, and then suddenly from giving a plating, you know, like plated by the chef, and then everything is in the box, and everything uses plastics. We are using like everything actually eco friendly, and then suddenly it has to be packed again using plastic. So it takes a lot of you know, changes to evolve. And then also after that, we, we observe, well, actually, a lot of people are also still scared to buy food from takeaway and delivery. They want to cook themselves at home. So we created Animale to go from our house to your home. It's basically ingredients, meal kits that people can buy, fresh pasta, sauces, and then they can cook it themselves at home. And that actually creates quite a good um, interest from our clients. And then, we are, again, we have to evolve again because the restaurant needs to sort of like minimize our staff, right? Like, so everybody just works one shift. We open at 11, we close at 8, but we need accessibility. So we jumped also into e-commerce. So we are available as an official store in Tokopedia and everything so that all our customers can always, if they want to buy it, they can just buy it right then and there. Again, another evolve. We need to go into retail because then people will know who we are and can grab and go anywhere, they, anytime they have. So we also work with um, Grand Lucky. So we put our animale to go uh, fresh artisan pasta and sauces there. So that it creates great visibility also from my part in terms of marketing, promotion. So people get top of mind when they think of fresh pasta, they will think of us. So that's like a very strong and a lot of changes within two months. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that we have the ability to adapt. And we are very also grateful that we have uh, your support because with Foodies Magazine's newsletter, they will promote about us. You know, everything is, um, the food industry here is like, it's a close-knit close, close -knit family, I believe, in Indonesia. And, and, and I'm grateful to have all this support, especially from you, Jet. Thank you. It's, you know, it's, uh, we, we're, it's always our pleasure to be able to help uh, our F&B friends. Um, and you know, as again, as observing uh, from our side, observing what you guys have been doing, we've been amazed. You know, um, I think uh, uh, the the meal kits and the pasta kits from the beginning, you were one of the first uh, restaurants to start uh, sending out the pasta kits, and you know, I've enjoyed the pasta at home, <laughs> even if I'm stuck at home, and you know. Uh, now that you've expanded and doing retail, I think it's you know it's 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 grown 
uh, your your reach has grown tremendously, and uh, I think that's that's the beauty of how our FNB friends uh, like you have uh, evolved very quickly. Like what you said, you know, in the past two months, and uh, that's a testament to you guys being innovative and being uh, proactive in the way that you you you've handled the the pandemic. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to comment on was, you know, um, I think it's important that we reach out to our database. Uh, right, right. We have existing clients who, who, like us at Foodies, we have existing readers who know us and who read us and who enjoy our content. And I'm sure restaurants like uh, uh, Animale and uh, your other restaurants have their own fans. And I think it's... Uh, it's it's nice to reach out to our to our database and be able to to mine the list you know we've been i i have to admit we we were slow in the beginning but you know now we we've gotten very good uh, traction with sending out our bi-weekly uh expeditions newsletter which is you know just to keep uh, in touch with our with our readers how do you uh, reach out to your database so basically um a lot of years behind, we have so many database, but we don't have a team to crunch with that. Mm-hmm. So, in the, in the past, um, maybe a past year, we are, you know, putting a focus on 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 uh, leveraging our database. Uh, that being said, it's still been done manually. It's still being done um, after we pull out all our database. We are still doing it manually because we are again we are a high-end lifestyle fine dining you know more like a high-end high touch you know so we don't we cannot just give like a blast to them they want personalized service they want um they really want that being said they really want at least me or or all the people to sort of like remind them of what's going on so i often call my phone as a hotline bling it's like this everything all my database is linked to all the database in the restaurant so i know who's contacting me and we have a list of uh, uh let's say top 100 most repetitive customers top 50 top 100 which we really built relationship with and and that's what keep them retained so you know, like to 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 be able to always have to be their top of mind when they want to go out and eat, when they need services, when they and I and and based on that data, we actually know what they really like. So whenever we come up with something new, we always let them know. Even with the animale as well, like the pasta, I know some some clients from the other restaurants like pasta. So I let so we we let them know and we blast it and 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 sort of like not blast we texted them personally personalized touch because we are lifestyle something like that so that's how we make money from database. Well, that's great. Um, I've received a few of those messages, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to to share that. I just wanted to share our our, our newsletter, uh, our expeditions newsletter, uh, to. Uh, to our viewers, huh? uh, so b- bi-weekly we we send out uh, our expeditions it's, it's newsletter. Expeditions is our non-magazine uh, uh, brand. Uh, uh, you know, we this issue we we shared uh, a lot of uh, food uh, from. Uh, we we shared where other people are ordering food from, you know, because <laughs> sometimes we're all bored. We were all bored eating at home, so we've uh, we've asked our friends, for example, at HS Galaxy, to share their favorite uh, their favorite delivery delivery places, uh, and then we we send out the newsletter, and then we've you know it's our little it's our way of helping our friends in the F and B industry, trying to be able to showcase. Um, our friends and and other other uh, FNB outlets, uh, we 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 do we do it bi-weekly. So those who have not uh, who are not on our mailing list, you can uh, email us at info at foodies.id and we can add you to our mailing list. Another feature that we've done is. Uh, best insta eats you know uh we're stuck at home and there are uh, one of the observations that we've seen is you know this growing trend of home food businesses 
And then here we highlight five, every issue, five of uh, the small uh, home businesses, which, you know, are trying to do their share in uh, spreading FNB uh, and uh, helping out uh, other people. Uh, so, you know, it's our pleasure to help, you know, these small businesses to grow the small business uh, sector. And, uh, you know, anything good is, is we we be happy to feature. Anything good to eat, obviously, is happy to feature. That looks cool. That's, yeah. We also get your support, and we are very grateful for it because then people will get to know um, that we also serve not just in restaurants, but we also have, like, another brand uh to to you know like from our house to our, to your home we have like now about 30 different fresh pastas uh available and so mm -hmm. it's actually something quite uh it's from our heart we want to we want to make sure that we can keep as many employees as we can so we mm -hmm. <laughs> basically make them work uh, and then, oh, okay, so it's not too busy, the restaurant. All right, then you work for, for retail, you work for e-commerce, you have to produce nonstop. So even now they have to do like, um, you know, like they have to do overtime because they need to fill up the spaces. So I think uh, sometimes I always say that it's because we, yeah. we don't want to give up that easily. I mean, we have a chance. Yeah, of course chance we have the chance and we we try our best to adapt to the changes and try to save as many as, as our people as we possibly can um i think uh that's all for us uh we do want to pass it back to mesa and the rest of the panel thank you everybody thank you for listening okay okay thank you so much jet and astrid what a uh inside what an insight for from the restaurant point of view and also the media point of view related with the restaurants and foodies so oh yeah by the way if we, if you guys have a very good questions please uh, start to give it comments and ask a questions and the best question will receive a hundred thousand vouchers from hokkaido izakaya babuji social affair Sabu Sabu House, sponsored by CHOP. Thank you, CHOP. So everyone can start to throwing a question to the uh, comments. Yeah. Uh. <coughs> Sorry. OK, so uh, before we start to the uh, third speaker, we want to have a short explanations about our company. Uh, and our company has a very, very good events to join. So by the way, I'm gonna call uh, my sales managers uh, from Marquee Service Offices. Uh, he's the uh, he's been in Marquee for three years, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, please welcome Davin Prasetya. Hi, David. Uh, oh, can hi, you... my, uh... Okay, you can start, David. Okay, thank you, Maisa. Okay, so I'm gonna share a bit about what Mahesa said that our company is having an event with China. We collaborate with a very big company and well-known company in China known as WTOIP. So this year we're going to host an event called CIEF Live. So the CIEF Live, what is it and what is the benefit during this pandemic COVID-19 is that we're going to have a live exhibition which is going to be live starting from 22nd to 28th July 2020. This event is 100% sponsored by the China Guangzhou Municipal People Government. So it's 100% supported by the government. So what is CIEF? Actually is a multinational and international platform where all types of industries, any types of company can join this live exhibition so you can have a brand awareness more online and you can spread the words about your business, about your application, about your technology to the China and also all around the world.
so review a bit of the CIEF 2019 last year this event is done offline which means there is a 21,000 square meter of exhibition which is as large as two hectare just for this event and all the people to join this event this event itself generate a revenue of in rupiah is 14 trillion rupiah which means a lot of transaction actually happen it has a 70,000 visitors it has more than 20 countries participating and more than 300 media agencies foreign and local so a bit just to explain what is cief we are going to carry out this event this year online exhibition online display online matchmaking online negotiation and also online signing which we will have digital transformation and pioneering innovation so this is just a bit slight info of what the booth looks like if you imagine in indonesia in jakarta especially there is a whole big hall called as jcc jakarta convention center actually it's like that but you just turn the booth into online so it's like you will feel yourself going through the booth you will feel yourself going through virtually looking at the booth and all the potential visitors and buyer can visit your booth this is the example of the online booth so you will feel like actually you're in offline but it's through a computer through a web where you can see your booth where people can visit your booth and even not only this online booth you have you will also have an online live streaming if you all people know right now about the ig live about the shopee live that now you can also do a live about your product during this event for seven days you can promote your product to a lot of people around the world who join this event offline may have 70,000 but we assure you that online will attract more people up to 100,000 visitors online conference and auction on sales you can do also cloud conference and roadshow will be um, if you know there's an event last week uh, from UK is a COGX live is where all the people all the what I say uh, is like they share their knowledge through this live conference also so this is I think my last slide uh, people used to ask who are the guests who are the people coming is actually academicians professors scholars corporate executive foreign government leaders entrepreneurs PC and experts also will be coming to this event mm. finally online matchmaking will also occur I think uh, that's all from me thank you and if you have any question you can also ask Mahesa or, or in the comment box. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Devin. Uh, if you guys are interested to join this kind of virtual exhibitions in China for seven days, you can type on the live comments and I will share uh, like the further information. Okay, uh, we shall move on to the third speakers. So uh, he's a currently a general manager of CHOP, a dining app that helps people find a restaurant of their choice and make reservations online. Started his journey since 2008 and used to work in India, Abu Dhabi, Canada, USA, and also Indonesia. So pretty much every continent in the world. So he has been living in Indonesia for four years. I mean, he used to be a country head of Zomato since 2013 till 2017. Uh, please welcome the uh, general manager of CHOP, Mr. Kartik Shetty. Hi, Mr. Can you start? Hi, Mahesa. Yes, I can. Thank you. Yeah, please. Uh, okay, cool. So thank you for the invitation uh, and for allowing me to also be part of this panel along with Jed, Astrid, and Selvi. Um, so, you know, I think Jed and Astrid have started off very well talking about how the FNB industry can and should be leveraging their existing databases now more than ever to look to grow their business. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is how technology can help them in doing that. Um, so, so yeah, so a quick introduction about Chop. We're a dining app and, um, you know, we have a mission to help create memorable dining experiences for people more often 
And the first step for a memorable dining experience is, you know, making sure that when you get to a restaurant, uh, you have your reservation confirmed, right? So that's where it all begins. And we want to be uh, certain and help people in that very first step itself. Uh, we've been in Indonesia for a little over two years now. Um, we work with over 800 restaurants in Jakarta and Bali. And yeah, uh, we also, you know, uh, our technology suite uh, of products uh, have been used by restaurants of all kinds, you know. Uh, in fact, um, uh, Ibu Astrid's restaurants also use choke stable management systems. Uh, along with a whole lot of other uh, standalone restaurants, chains, and groups, uh, as well as the restaurants in the hotels. Um, so before, uh, in fact, let me move to the next slide. So one of the most important things about, you know, what restaurants can do today, and uh, Ibu Astrid spoke about this, was, you know, she said it's not just about messaging your customers and letting them know, but it's about personalization. Personalization is absolutely important. I mean, a date, having a customer database does not just mean, you know, having someone's name, email, and phone number. You need to know more about them. They, every customer who comes and visits your restaurant uh, has certain characteristics, which, you know, uh, I think the f and industry should be paying more attention to, and a lot of them have been. And how technology can help you, how chops, uh, systems actually help is it helps you, you know, not just save uh, the history of your customers' visits in the past, but it also allows you to do what's called as smart tagging. So if someone is a wine lover, you can tag their profile with a wine emoji. Uh, if someone you know is, you know, a regular heavy spender, you can tag them with, you know, the appropriate emojis for that. If someone has, a, let's say, a prawn or a shellfish allergy, you could tag their profiles with those as well, with the emojis as well. So, um, you know, uh, someone like uh, Astrid, who's been in the F&B industry for such a long time, you know, I mean, her memory is pretty sharp. So she'll probably remember all the regular customers and all their, uh, you know, characteristics and preferences. Uh, but not everyone would be in that position. And also, you know, I think in the f and industry, the attrition rate for a lot of the staff is pretty high. So it becomes all the more important to make sure that you're uh, leveraging technology to make sure that your the information on your database about your customers is always up to date so that even if the staff changes, uh, you know, whoever else comes in, they always know what you know the preferences of your customers are and that is key um, and that's how the chop uh, table management and reservation systems uh, have been helping uh, a lot of our restaurant partners um, and communication as well you know again uh, you know per coming back to the personalization touch you know when restaurants are doing something new Knowing who to contact with what message, again, you know, can be leveraged through the system. Uh, the second part about how restaurants can look to increase their revenue uh, during these times is extending their knowledge about the customers to making sure that they don't lose out on any possible uh, revenue channels or, you know, opportunities. And now, especially after PSBB, um, a lot of restaurants, you know, they have been, in fact, I think all restaurants have been asked to operate at only 50% capacity because now they need to increase the spacing, you know, between the tables. Um, so now more than ever, ensuring that, you know, every table that can be occupied with a possible reservation should be, you know, done. And again, technology helps you with this. Um, you know, when you're, especially if your regular customers want to visit the restaurant uh, and they're trying to make a reservation either online or by the phone, uh, making sure that, you know, not just a table is available, but so, for example, if someone wants to make a reservation um, for, say, 6.30 for four people, uh, but at 6.30, a table isn't available, but you know at 7 p.m. there will be a table for four, which will become free. Uh, now, using pen and paper, this is going to be almost impossible. Uh, but this is where, again, technology comes in and helps you. 
and so you would be able to you know uh, increase the efficiency at which you are allocating tables to your customers and therefore automatically you know uh, revenue goes up um, so these are some of the additional channels that partnering with chop has brought to our restaurants as you can see on their instagram their tripadvisor on their google page and a whole lot of other platforms they get an online reservation button as well by partnering with chop which directly sends the reservation to their system um, i think minimizing risks also is something that you know can automatically result in uh, a possibility of revenue increasing so one you know way of doing it is obviously encouraging people to reserve and come up front and not do you know a direct walk in um reducing human error i spoke about this earlier about leveraging technology and so you know uh, ensuring that you have a 100% utilization of your space becomes very important uh, and you know making sure that people who reserve don't cancel or no show at the last minute uh, again using technology using uh, the platforms we offer uh, you can also collect restaurants can collect deposits um from you know the people making a reservation and actually uh, pretty soon we are also launching a minimal contact dining experience where people can also select the dishes they want in the process of making the reservation itself so that way when they get to the restaurant you know uh, it's just an added safety measure if they don't want to interact too much with the staff this is an additional uh you know option that restaurants can use um and okay these are just some statistics about chop but probably what i'll focus in my last minute here is about you know during uh, the lockdown that happened uh, chop also pivoted very very quickly uh, in singapore within 2 days we launched an online table uh, food ordering uh, system leveraging our existing technology and in jakarta and bali what we did was we launched something very similar to food delivery but it was through purchasing of food vouchers on the chop platform and then connecting with the restaurants over whatsapp because the feedback we got was uh, with minimal staff available uh, the restaurants were not very certain if you know using all the systems would be possible and so you know very very simple straightforward buy the voucher through the app whatsapp it to the restaurant staff and that's it you know your order is arranged so those were some of the you can say pivots and changes in strategy that chop also implemented during um, you know the psbb period starting from early april and these these were some of the measures which we took also to try and ensure that not only we stayed relevant to those who use chop but we were also looking to do something that whatever we could to our restaurant partners because uh, as both you know jed and uh, ashford had mentioned earlier um, it was a very very surreal period in time where you know suddenly overnight you know um, restaurants are empty and you know the whole social vibe, vibe of jakarta and pretty much i think most cities in the world uh, changed and so we we needed to do what we could in order to help our restaurant partners and i think yeah um, you know uh, we 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 managed to do a decent job were there areas to improve for sure but uh, but yeah so um, that's it for me um, yeah thanks mahesha okay <laughs> thank you so much artik So okay, uh, the last but not least, this is uh, from our partners. Uh, aspired by to materialize omni-channel, so pretty much everything, in the fast-growing market, she's leading in the client representative at Tada. Extens extensive retail network and product strategy have bought exposures of other expertise offline and online. Please welcome uh, the head of the client representative from Tada, Miss Selfia Salim. Hello, Miss Selfia. Selfie, <laughs> sorry. Just Selfia, without a. Okay, can you can you unmute? Uh, yeah. Uh, still mute. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, okay, please Selfie. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mahesa. Uh, and also, I would like to thank our previous uh, three uh, insightful speakers. And I have to say, I agree with uh, each one of them. Uh, and before I can explain why, uh, let me share you a bit about loyalty program to create database uh, that can be leveraged to generate sales. Um, so Tarda is an end-to-end -end customer retention platform. Uh, we do help businesses to retain and engage better with their customers. Um, this platform has quite a broad uh, spectrum. Uh, as you can see, uh, we can start from capturing customer information and then promotion engine, customer data platform, and personalized communications. Um, every day uh, with brands, customers are walking in and out of the stores without the brands actually knowing who the customers are. And the moment the customer is stepping out of the store, uh, say a restaurant, uh, actually brands has lost touch with the customers. Unless uh, one day the customers are willingly on their own coming back to the uh, stores, then that moment they can engage again uh, with the customers. But it's a one-off transactional base. What the brands wants with the customers are actually on the relationship base. Uh, so with this capturing customer information, we have uh, we are able to help brands to capture the information, be it uh, the transaction via the store, website, or social media like Instagram. And after they collect the data from the customers, of course, they want to engage. They want to um, be in this relationship, conducting activity with the customers, and they can run programs like subscription. As you can see here, we will uh, go through uh, deeper through the promotion engine later on. Uh, but the thing is, after they conduct the activity, if the data collected is um, just stored in the server in the data in the database. It's just a raw data. It doesn't provide anything for the brand. So we have to help the brands to turn the data into, into insights that can help brands uh, determine their next strategy in the future uh, for, the, for, for uh, their customers. Using customer data platform, they have uh, customer attributes, customer scoring, uh, what the customers likes and don'ts, and then uh, all kinds of those metrics that uh, brands can gain uh, from the activity conducted with the customers. And the strategy as the out output of these um, insights will then uh, have to be communicated by the brands to the customers. And this, this communication, as uh, I believe Astrid, uh, Pak Jet, and also uh, Kartik also mentioned that it's very important to have a personalized communication. And here we have uh, uh, several channels via email, SMS, and push notifications. Um, so we talked about data because uh, uh, having loyalty program means uh, having customer data. The loyalty program we are talking about here today is not the traditional loyalty program. This is the loyalty program that, um, uh, uh, not the traditional loyalty program, uh, I meant where uh, brands give away rewards to the customers without actually knowing the clear attributions uh, towards the customer and that particular transaction. So that statement leads to the question, what types of loyalty program are great for FNB? Uh, just so simply uh, going through the, the, the features, uh, you, I'm sure you are familiar with this loyalty card. C customer comes, make a transaction, and then cashier will give a stamp. When the stamp is fulfilled, then customers are eligible, eligible to get a reward. Uh, and then we turn it into a digital uh, uh, platform. Uh, it is more secure, and also customer will collect uh, data uh, of the customers. And then we also have a uh, membership and subscription. Um, membership, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, except that with this platform, you can have a tiering level. The, the higher the level, the more benefit that the customers can get. And then for subscription, I have to say this is like uh, Netflix. So you cannot buy one movie uh, uh, on Netflix. You, you, you have to pay a, a subscription fee upfront 
and then you will enjoy unlimited movie movies series for the whole month so the same concept with that subscription that we we, we help brands with is that uh to help brands get one is to get upfront revenue and of course second one is to lock in their customers as to not uh, be uh, easy to shift to other brands why because uh, the, the customers already pay an upfront fee already invested upfront fee to the brand so they 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 want to enjoy this set of exclusive benefits because they are uh, the exclusive uh, members or we can call subscriber and then we, we, we have this reseller and referral uh, uh, program. Uh, you may be familiar with the member get member uh, features that, that it's been ages, yeah, since, since the ancient time, uh, word of mouth marketing is one of the best strategy. Uh, so uh, we want to pull a, a further extension to, to from member get member, which is member get customer. Why? Because uh, we, want to empower brands to enable their customers to become their sales channel. So brands have customers base and they can use this customers base as their uh, extensive sales channel. Um, that way uh, they can appreciate their customers more and, and give more rewards and then a uh, customer who are the loyal advocate of your brand will promote more about this brand. And then uh, a lot of uh, uh, brands, of course, during the past three to four, four months uh, uh, in particular, uh, realized that they have to strengthen their um, online or digital channel since they cannot solely depend on their uh, physical store. Uh, that's why uh, um, some, some brands are, wish to have their own delivery order platform because uh, they, they can have a, they don't have to cut some of their margins to pay to the third party online delivery platform. And then also they can collect customer database from this, of course. So the next one I'm going to share with you about autopilot rewards program. It's a very smart uh, campaign. Uh, this, this, this autopilot reward program uh, is about habit building concept. Why? Because I'm sure uh, some of us, the practitioner in FNB, um, and then business owners probably, or even customers, uh, we know that one of the hardest homework by the FNB industry or uh, restaurants are getting the first timers coming back for the second time. And it is also said that once they came back for the second time, they are more likely to come back in the future. So uh, autopilot, Autopilot uh, rewards foster the habit to buy from your brand even more. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of simulation here. Uh, here is, uh, we have a customer signing up to a program and get the 20% voucher discount. And uh, as I mentioned, second visit is very important. So uh, this customer say, uh, to, to, to attract him uh, coming back to the restaurants, we can give them a 40 discount e-voucher, a, a, a bigger amount of discount, yeah, as you can see. And we can state it is expired within three days. Uh, for uh, The purpose of this is to attract the customers to make the second or next transaction immediately because it really matters within the next few days whether or not uh, the customers decide if they had the, if they have had um, good first experience, and then should they not use it, uh, the the number the amount of discount will keep decreasing, as you can see. But uh, uh, naturally, the customers would try to uh, make a transaction within the the allotted time. Why? Because they don't want to lose the perks of getting a big discount. And of course, the brand will get uh, benefits such as uh, increasing the customer return rate because they, they, they are engaged in this cycle of uh, rewards, autopilot rewards. 
and also uh, increase the average bill size because because you can set the minimum purchase for each e vouchers and then also a comprehensive customer behavior data which at the end you can uh, personalize your communication communication to your customers so we've been talking about data collection now i'm going to move on to uh, what what we are going to do with the data we are going to uh, have a customer segmentation and it is conducted using uh, four parameters, which are recency, frequency, monetary, and advocacy. With recency, we want to know uh, when the last time your customer visit your store or make a transaction. With frequency, we can find out the gap or intervals between one visit to another or to the next one. And then monetary, of course, we can see the uh, how 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 uh, big is the uh, uh, um, purchasing power by the customers. And the last one, advocacy, we want to see uh, if the customers are actively promote, uh, promoting your brand or not. So after we do the segmentation, it is divided into 10 segments, as you can see on the screen. Uh, we have it from champions until hibernating. Of course, with each segment, we treat them differently. For example, what, what do you imply from the champion uh, from the champion uh, segment. Uh, I can describe it to you as the, a group of customers who uh, visit the stores often and make a big transaction amount. For those customers, they are the potential adopters for your new product. So they will more likely to promote your product. Why not rewarding them more? So that's how we treat the champions. What about the need attention? What does this reflect? So the need attention segments are a group of customers who um, they probably visit the stores often, but they make a rather small amount of transaction. And of course, from the brand side, brand would want to increase the average spending of the customers. That's why we can make a limited time offers uh, for those group of customers. For example, 50% uh, 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 e voucher discount, uh, with minimum purchase of 200K. While at the same time, we know their usual spending average is only 100K. By imposing this um, uh, program or campaign, we can make the group of customers in the need atten attention segment to increase their average spending. And uh, 10 years ago, probably uh, all the brands care about is awareness, awareness, awareness. Nowadays, instead of sending the same message to everyone at the same time, we want to be able to personalize our messages to send it to the customers at the right time. I, I can give you three examples here for product personalization, offer and time personalization. Product personalization, for example, you know that a certain group of customers uh, are attached to a, a, a certain product line. Once you are about to release a new launching for that kind of product, you can send specific uh, message to that customers. From the customer side, they will feel as if this brand really know what he or she likes or don't. So they, they feel that it's uh, their affinity is growing stronger, stronger, uh, stronger and stronger with the brand. And also with the special offer, uh, of course, uh, some customers like to get a discount. Some customers like to get a free items and all of those things we can personalize and create tailor made for each single customers by using the uh, that data. Uh, programmed in the platform and of course uh, some customers probably uh, like to shop uh, during the weekend uh, or weekdays and with this time personalization uh, we can determine whether we are going to send out the campaigns during uh, uh, which preferable times by the customer and this is the look of our dashboard so you can see uh, brands uh, can send out a push notification, SMS blast, email blast, uh, information and promotional uh, uh, communication, even sending e-vouchers and send the rewards. Okay, this is the example. Um, campaign analytics uh, contains uh, after you uh, gather data, 
you uh, we 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 manage the data for you and turn it into insights, and then brands can uh, absorb the insights and uh, formulate a marketing strategy, and then they execute it. After they execute it, we do not stop there. We continue to provide insights as uh, to let the brand knows whether or not the campaign successful or not. That's why, as you can see. After they uh, communicate with the customers, we can track the statistic, the open rate, delivery rate, and such uh, until the conversion rate to sales. Uh, for example, uh, during uh, we can track uh, the the number of transaction during the promo, before the promotional period, and after the promotional period. Uh, some campaigns probably. Uh, after the promotional period, uh, customers' uh, sales uh, drop by certain percentage. But uh, it will be a great success if even after the promotional period, the customers keep coming back and perform a transaction with the brand. So I think that's what what uh, every brand wants to 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 see at the end of the day. So uh, that's all from me. Uh, uh, I'm giving it back to you, Mahesa. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Selfie. So what a insightful uh, presentation, yeah. Okay, uh, because we are running out of time, uh, we just jumping into the Q&A session. So by the way, when I check the live comments here, there's a uh, five, uh, five participants who are throwing questions in here. Start from Iqbal Lutfi, and I guess this is for Karthik and Astrid, yeah. So let me check. Wait. Okay. Okay. For the new businesses, uh, startup skills, what are the options to expose our products to customers since doing? Grand opening gestures may not be suitable during social distancing. What do you think? Yeah. Oh yeah. Why don't you answer first, Karti, and then I'll add. <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, you know this has to be tackled in two different ways. Um, if your product is primarily focused on a B two B segment, uh, then the way the approach you would take would have to be different. If it's on the B2C segment, your product, then uh, again, the approach might have to be different. I think B2C, uh, digital has to be a way, you know, COVID, no COVID. I think uh, that's the easiest, most effective uh, way in order to scale and get the reach. Uh, B2B, now, I think, unfortunately, yes, it, uh, you know, the traveling and doing grand openings physically uh, is going to be a challenge. But I think you might have to look at doing it on a more personal basis. So actually taking the trouble to go and visit someone, uh, get some kind of a small days going, um, you know, from a pricing point of view, it might have to be a freemium model that you start off with, with a few uh with your initial set of customers and then look to expand uh from there so so yeah i think depending on whether you're b2b or b2c uh those are the two different uh, approaches that you might have to take i think uh i think we also need to know what kind of new business that you are talking about in terms of uh what kind of product you're selling because for us in terms of restaurant uh fnb yes I'm launching, uh, we are in the group, we are launching a few new concepts and a few new restaurants. Like when we launched Animal to go as well, uh, we don't have to do like a grand opening or but we can choose uh, the right person to help us spread the word, such as Foodies Magazine. <laughs> so exactly, you know, like to have a media relation, a very strong media relation, very strong network. You know, we have a strong digital communications and you know content and communications so that we can spread the word towards the right people so they will know about it and it works it works so whatever it is your product then you just need to sort of like find a way to know the right people to help you spread the word and it will work at least that's from me in terms of fnb okay cool so you guys 
four of you guys, four of you guys has been related, yeah, in order to boost your revenue again, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a top client, so like. Well, we mentioned that I get all the personalized data. All my staff can put it in, uh, in the in the system, and we are taking that data into the personalizing text and communications with our clients. That's how we get the the, the word out and understand who our clients are. Okay, cool. Thank you. So I'm I'm just gonna uh, read all of the this question in a particular order, yeah. Uh, okay, so the question, the second question will be from Christine, and this is for Kartik only. And what is Chop doing to help restaurants now when revenue is down? Yeah, what are you doing, Kartik? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, thanks for putting me in the spotlight. But uh, no, uh, I think um, so. There are two things. Uh, one I had covered briefly earlier. Um, I think we were one of the first brands to do a quick pivot. Uh, you know, brands that are serving the F and B industry primarily. Look, Chope was all about dining in, right? Getting people to go and dine in, and then restaurants closed. Um, so we did a very, very quick pivot uh, in order to help restaurants to focus on their delivery uh, products, delivery. who were keeping their kitchens open. So that was the first, uh, you know, uh, assistance that we offered. Uh, the second assistance that we are offering is something, you know, which is from now. A lot of our restaurants, in fact, all of our restaurant partners, uh, not only have we waived off the subscription fees for the last month, but we've also waived it off for the month of June. And there are a few discounts for the month of July and August as yeah. well. Um, and this has also been communicated to our restaurant partners, uh, including Astrid. Yeah. Um, and so um, I think what whatever can be done in, in, to, in order to support not just helping restaurants to get more business, but, you know, from a cash point of view, cash flow point of view, we understand that revenue has been down. And so, um, you know, wherever possible, to whatever extent possible, uh, we have been, uh, you know, reducing the prices uh, for the restaurants going ahead once they start to reopen. So that the burden of you know an additional expense is not there. So those are the two things we've been doing. Um, I don't know if that's enough, but you know, in order for us to also continue to survive, uh, this is the extent to which we can help. Uh, any other assistance that we can, uh, if we are able to come up with some additional ideas, obviously we will. Okay. Yeah. Maybe to add to add the idea that uh, maybe that this is something that we also had it uh, because Marquee Group has a restaurant. Maybe they can create a video to just mention about the hygienity of the restaurant itself. Maybe like the campaign and why they, uh, how they will serve the restaurant itself, like the hygienity and then and the touchless stuff. And then let's say the uh, kitchen stuff will be very hygiene like washing washing their hand all the time and whatever and then the social distancing restaurant like the the setup dining set maybe <laughs> that's our idea okay so and by the way for for a jet and selfie maybe you can uh check the live comment and then prepare for the questions uh, prepare for the answer <laughs> and then by the way this is another for astrid and kartik from ritwan dharmawan uh what is the best marketing tools and promotions choose during this pandemic to, to expose the restaurants? I can answer that one first because okay. we just opened last week on Monday, right at the start when the PSDB was lifted mm -hmm. on Monday on the 8th of June. So we basically, um, like what you said, we also showcase our health protocol, our, like the SOP for our health protocols is very, very important. And we basically spent, we reopened on Monday, we spent all of Saturday and Sunday training all of our staff about their um, health protocols, hygiene, like like telling them like, you gotta wear your mask, your face shield, your gloves, everything. But it's not just for the customers, it's also for their safety. So yeah. they are doing it because they have to, because it's actually for them. So they understand that first. And then second, 
we are basically doing a lot of role plays, you know, wondering what would the customers need and everything. So we are um, creating like this package utensil. So when you arrive at the restaurant, you have a, a bag, plastic, inside is the utensils, the plates, the napkins, the fork, the knives, the spoon, and the disposable menu. So everything is already in plastic. So when if you see our Instagram at Animalia Restaurant, you can see like everything is totally sanitized. And we are also, once they arrive, we also showcasing that we are serving uh, quad sanitizing, which is sort of like a food contact uh, sterilizer stuff so they can really do it. Plus, different gloves for different actions for people who serve the food they have black gloves for people who take the the, uh, the empty plates or clean up they have white gloves so it's complete thing complete and 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 praise god that uh the best marketing tools and promotion that we did was we have a very good relationship with the media as well it was highlighted in compass it was all over everybody who comes in they they literally come because of that because, oh, and then you can see posts where people say, oh, you know, we trust you because we see how sometimes looking people will think that I'm we are too extra, but it is the time for us to be extra. And we are promoting our extra-ness or lebay ini. Uh, karena kita juga, we really want everybody to be safe. So that is sort of like how we expose our restaurant, aside from the great food. Because food, great food itself right now, it just doesn't, you know, people, it will not bring people to come to the restaurant unless you really feel safe. That's for me. I want to. I wanted to add uh, that uh, I appreciate as a diner. I appreciate what uh, restaurants like uh, Animale are doing. It gives uh, the diner a sense of uh, you know uh, of the safety and the effort that people uh, at the restaurant is doing to to encourage the diners to come to their venues. Exactly. We have to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to add. <laughs> yeah, Karthik, you want to add? Um, nothing much to add. I think I'll only, um, you know, have to say that if restaurants in the past have not been investing as much in media relations and in communications to identify, uh, you know, personalized details about their diners, uh, then I think overnight they're not going to be able to do something. But I think the good news is it's never too late to start. And so they just need to start investing in these things that, you know, uh, Astrid has already spoken about. Um, because these are, you know, building customer loyalty is not something that can happen overnight. And the trust that a customer has to have in a restaurant, especially at times like this, uh, will all the more, you know, uh, is all the more important. Uh, and in order to get the, gain that trust, it is, you know, some sort of an investment also that the restaurants have to be looking to do. So um, if you haven't been doing it, no problem. It's not too late, but please consider doing it. Uh, that's that's the only additional thing I would have to add to what Astrid said. Yeah. So so maybe uh, they can start to join CHOP, yeah, as a marketing tool, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> to pro yes channel but like i said i think it's you know chop is just one small you know uh spoke in the larger picture right um so i think the idea is we should not go down and get lost first in the details first we should see the big picture and then go down into the details hmm. okay cool so okay thank you so much for the answer so so now there should be to Jet, I guess. This is for Jet from Linda, if I'm mistaken. Let me check. Yeah. According to you, which target market will more likely go back to dine in soon? Fine dining or middle range restaurants? What do you think? Uh, thank you. Um, hi, Linda. I think uh, after three months of being in lockdown, uh, <laughs> Everyone wants to go out and eat, you know. Uh, there's obviously a, a large uh, apprehension on the safety and uh, uh, safety factor. Um, I think like the previous question uh, and, and the highlight of what uh, Animale is doing with, uh, Astrid is doing with Animale, is that uh, there is no range, I think, uh, fine dining or middle market. It's just that 
um, people, customers need to be um, comfortable to come out. And uh, whether you're a fine dining restaurant or you're a or a middle market uh, restaurant, it's it's being able to show to your your diners that you're ready. And I think um, a lot of very good examples are out there. Uh, and um, we've all been stuck at home. And I think uh, people are excited to come out. I uh, was craving for dim sum. <laughs> and yeah. a dim sum, I, you know, it's something I can't cook at home, you know. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, yeah. it's something that I was really craving to have. And uh, I saw a Chinese restaurant open last Saturday. And... You know, I jumped at the uh, opportunity to go out, and then when you get there, you go, "Oh, looks like they're they're safe. Looks like they're they're uh, ready." And uh, you know, it adds to you enjoying the meal. And uh, I think slowly but surely, everyone's going to come out to uh, to to flex their uh, eating out. So I think we're gonna see a lot of people come out because people are bored at home and restaurants have to be ready whether you're fine dining middle market or casual dining yeah definitely uh, i want to add something actually i went to the one of the restaurant uh under the sushi stuff yeah maybe you can tell <laughs> the very famous one in indonesia and they got a very good slp uh by the way because everything must be touchless and nothing nothing to be shared like and then if you want to check the menu uh, you can just uh uh scan the qr code and then yeah i mean and if you want to go to the restaurants you have to call first and book the reservations so i mean the uh the traffic there is not that low so i guess that's that's also the idea that maybe restaurants can do like in order to to make like the 50 percent of the uh the uh, occupancy of the restaurants at at one time maybe that's a good idea maybe yeah that's my idea okay next questions from amanda if i have a second from amanda yeah so this is for for uh for you again for me. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, for chop again. Can chop okay. expect restaurants to spend at such times for technology, for card trick, of course. Okay. Um, okay. I, I hope I don't misinterpret the question, but um, I think it's not about whether chop or any other you know uh, platform that's providing some kind of a technology <laughs> service expects. Uh, I think it's more about you know what are the benefits and whether technology can actually help restaurants to either increase revenue or to make sure that they don't lose revenue, right? Mm -hmm. As long as one of these is actually, uh, you know, being able to be demonstrated, um, then I think it's for the restaurant to then uh, take a call. Um, I definitely think also the second thing to sort of uh, remember here, especially for restaurants, uh, because typically most uh, F&B uh, brands look at, you know, whenever they're spending money, they classify everything as a spend. Um, but I think digging one step deeper over here and differentiating spends before you get business versus a spend because you have got business would be an important differentiation to make. And once they start categorizing the different expense items on their balance sheet as to what are the expense items being done before even they get business and what are the expense items that might be that they might have to do because they got business, uh, if they can differentiate that, I think that would uh, help them identify which are the cases where they uh, might be actually then willing or where they might see it is actually okay uh, to make a spend for technology and where it might not be okay. So yeah, I think I think uh, but there is no expectation from Cho. Uh, we definitely see the benefit of it. Uh, and like I said, I think in, in our case, there is, um, you know, uh, there is a demonstrable, uh, 
benefit of both the points I mentioned, not just increasing revenue, but also ensuring restaurants don't lose out on getting revenue. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry if, I don't know, I mean, the problem is from my side about the uh, con internet connection or from your side. I couldn't hear you very clearly, but hopefully Amanda uh, can hear it. Yeah. Okay, so next next questions from James. Oh, no, 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 I guess from James, maybe. Or from Iqbal, yeah, from James. So this is for selfie, yay. <laughs> for selfie, uh, if Hello. we have a, yeah, for, if we have a simple database a gather quite manually in Excel file, can we still use it for target marketing? And also can, yeah, which kind of data should we prioritize to collect and will be most useful? Uh, for example, birthday, location ordering, or email. What do you suggest? Yeah, so uh, when you talk about, um, depends on the scale of your business, of course. If you're talking about uh one one branch of stores of course probably you can still manage everything through a single or simple database gathered uh, uh manually in an excel file but when we're talking about uh, as your business grow your customers grow it becomes more complex and you want to see uh, the more customers you have of course the the many kinds of uh people that you will meet and uh managing those data only uh, via Excel file will not give you uh, the, the best outcome. Um, most pro uh, even more uh, when you have more stores, uh, probably if, if you're talking about restaurants, you open a, up a new uh, branch. Uh, of course, uh, it becomes even more uh, complex than it was. Uh, also, uh, the other question, uh, about the which one is more important, yeah, uh, with the birthday data and yeah. then uh, location and email. Mm, I think previously uh, Kartik uh, already mentioned having customer data is not uh, does not simply mean uh, you have the email phone number and the name of the customers. Uh, Insight or, or, or this uh, data is a result of um, exercising this this whole database that we collect consisting of, uh, you can say birthday, location ordering, what type of menu they like, and then when is the time preferences for the customers to dine in, probably during weekends they like to uh, delivery, and uh, weekdays they like to do, uh, you know, uh, dine in in the, uh, in, the, in the restaurants, because on the way home from office to home, they will stop by the restaurants, so those kinds of behavior that you would want to combine and look at looking at the metrics and finally get the insight. So I cannot say uh, and would not uh, suggest that you take one particular aspect or metric as the most useful useful one. But uh, is uh, the more information you get, of course, the more the richer insight that you can uh, generate. Okay. Okay, cool. So this is going to be the last question uh, to self again uh, from Rebecca Agiesta. Agiesta. How do we know which loyalty program will be most suitable for our F&B businesses? Do we have to trial and error it? Can you suggest one based on, uh, based on your experience, Selfie? Yeah, okay. You, um... of course. <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> This is the uh, uh, one good question, uh, another good question. So uh, about trial and error, uh, probably at times it is inevitable, yeah. Uh, some businesses need to do this trial and error thing. Uh, but I think when we talk about uh, which one is more suitable for F&B business, we need to look at what actually their KPI, their goal. Uh, uh, of course, we talk about data and personalization, but usually they, they want to as many visitors uh, as uh, there can be uh, to increase the profit or to increase the number of visits, increase the average uh, spending. Uh, each of these KPI or, KPI or goal by the uh, 
uh, restaurants or business will determine which strategy that they have to impose. Let's say if they want to, uh, um, you know, increase the average spending and get a new revenue stream, then I will say business model like, like subscription will be a game changer because uh, with subscription, as I explained previously, a uh, brand can get uh, upfront revenue and of course uh, shape the habit of the customers to keep coming back and locking in them with that particular brand. Okay, cool. So I guess it's pretty much answered, yeah, for the whole question. So maybe maybe you guys can discuss which one the best questions. <laughs> maybe from, from Kartik, the sponsor one. <laughs> or maybe you can discuss it together, which one the best one, the best questions. What do you guys think? Um, I mean, we're, we're okay giving a voucher to each of the persons who ask the question so it's wow, like, yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> okay so for iqbal lutfi christine ritwan darmawan linda amanda and james you guys got it so thank you kartik <laughs> so uh before i end up this uh session uh can you guys give the, like the uh last words from each of you maybe start from jet from jet like uh my my thank you for having us um uh, Maisa and selfie and the rest of the team um my only last message is that i hope we come out and support our fnb uh friends uh i think uh like what i've said it's uh these industries the fnb and hospitality industry are hardest hit and i hope that we can come out uh support them Eat at your favorite restaurant, have a coffee, and uh, hang out. And let's go back. Let's try to go back to what yeah. we used to do, and you know, at the same time, support our friends in the industry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jen. And how about you, Astrid? So thank you again for having me. Uh, it's nice to catch up with everyone and share. And I think my message is um, help us also to. Uh, keep you safe at the restaurant because I need your cooperation you know sometimes to be able to create a health protocol environment it takes two to tango it's from the restaurant side and from the guest side so please uh, you know just follow every protocol that every restaurant each restaurant has different protocol just just follow it so that everybody can stay safe stay healthy yeah. and the restaurant can stay afloat as well Okay, thank you, Astrid. And stay stay standing yeah, all, all day long, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Kartik? Um, yeah, I think I'll echo like what um, Jed and Astrid said. Um, you know, firstly, thanks for having me on here. Thank you for those who've uh, tuned in to listen to this. Um, customers, yes. Uh, like Astrid said, it takes two to tango. So please don't complain about the additional... Uh, checks that have been put in place, uh, whether it's manual checks or, you know, leveraging technology, if restaurants want additional information or a few additional steps. Yeah, I think we should all come together uh, at this time, um, you know, in order to understand that, you know, the way to get back to normal is if we actually follow these new protocols that are there. And for those uh, others who are in the f and industry, you know, technology is there to help you. You are not in this alone. Please don't feel that you are alone. Um, try to make the most of technology that's available. And that's the only way we can uh, move forward from this current situation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The last but not least from Selfie, the knowledgeable girl, knowledgeable women. <laughs> Any <laughs> words? Any last message? Uh, I think pretty much the same. What I'm thinking uh, has already been conveyed by our friends uh, here. But uh, I just want to emphasize that during this hardship, I think it's very important for the customers and brands to uh, work this out hand in hand. Only by that way that the, the, they, we can grow back the, the trust uh, uh, from the customers to be confident uh, to go back to the um, business uh, and to, to go back to the restaurants again. And as uh, for restaurants, I think if uh, this hardship, aside uh, from the drawbacks or setbacks that it caused, I think there are some learning uh, that we can take, yeah, 
like for example uh, they start uh, to learn about other digital channels strengthen their other um you know advantages that they can actually uh, get that all this time they never look at that but now they they realize that they have to start something that uh, so that they do not depend only to the physical store i think that's that's all okay thank you so much so uh, this is the end of the show thank you so much guys especially for tada who are creating this and also uh foodies magazine and also chop who are giving the voucher and also astrid who always standing all, all day long all the time okay thank you so much and hopefully we're gonna have a meet on the other webinar or sessions yeah thank you okay guys. thank you okay thank you bye bye